Happy International Women's Day. Hi, my name is Sandrine Owasandahiro and I'm a final year PhD student in the English department. Um, I've been in UL 10 years now, um, so I came in in 2014 for my undergrad in English and History, stayed and did my MA in English and now completing my uh, PhD. Oh, it would definitely be in my fourth year when I went into um, doc Dr. Yana Lighthouse class to do um, African literature. I think I'd kind of struggled to kind of find like what I was like really passionate about like in regards to like um, research and like literature I suppose going to kind of go down the history route and when I did that class like I think it was kind of like the first time like I kind of saw like being black and like being African as a superpower because I actually understood all the theories and I understood like kind of my place as a scholar I, it was the first time I could see myself as like an academic scholar during that class so like I think that like really opened up like my MA possibilities and then like the PhD and like even now I look at how contemporary African cultural texts are addressing environmental catastrophe and its impact on life. So I turn to um, fiction, memoir, film and photography to kind of see how like contemporary um, African artists and thinkers um, bear witness to the kinds of living that exists um, during climate change and kind of how this um, adds to the larger discussion about the impact of life. I actually never really saw myself as someone that would be able to do like a PhD. Like when I did um, African literature, I was just kind of like just obsessed with the topics. And one of the topics we were talking about was just the genocide in Rwanda. And like that was like, um, I'm Rwandi. So I think it was something that was like really personal to do something that meant something to me. But then also the kind of flip side of doing African literature. It's you're reading about a lot of traumatic experiences so that was kind of something I was aware of and but then I think the way I looked at it was it was going to be something that was going to really help me understand like kind of my African cultural background and like really connect me um, with that and I remember even trying to kind of figure out the topic the most important thing was kind of like the stereotypes associated with the African continent uh, about it being this kind of place of like instability and death and that's all we see like whenever we go on our phone so I was became kind of a very personal mission to kind of change that but then not like in a very like naive way of like I'm gonna solve everything in Africa like I want to make the gesture of um, kind of contributing um, to like the larger discourse of like African politics and African studies and literature and kind of give a nuanced perspective so I think that's where like looking at climate change it affects everyone but then kind of making people stop and think like okay how does it affect um, Africans differently kind of what stories are they telling that we're missing here I think climate change is just the best way to start it because it is this like global um, issue yet like African voices are still left out so like if I can bring my work and kind of have people um, look at it as a point of reference when talking about climate change then I think I would have done something really meaningful. I think like once someone like pursues a PhD like funding opportunities are so hard to come by so I think that has always been like the main stressful um, element trying to really convince funding agency like the IRC or just like within UL to like really believe in your research. To overcome it, it's been like a lot of imposter syndrome like because when you're applying for funding it's why are you the best candidate and I think a lot of the time like where I don't know if it's being a woman or I don't know it's one of those things it's really hard to like hype myself up and talk myself up in that regards and really trying to be very convincing again like with the importance of my research and why we need African perspectives when we're talking about climate change. My first one would just be on uh, one of my people that I'm doing for my, my thesis would be uh, Wangari Mathai. So um, I'm looking at her memoir called Unbowed and I think it's been one of the things that has like really significantly changed my life as an African academic. So with her, she would have been the first um, East African woman to ever get a PhD. And she, she founded like the Greenbelt movement and when she was doing this, like again, she was kind of trying 
to really express like the importance of environmental concerns and then like gender politics in Kenya where like the society just wasn't ready for her so I felt like reading her memoir like I don't know in a weird way like I really connected to a lot of the things that she was talking about navigating a society of like reimagining what it means to be an African woman reimagining kind of taking up space as an African woman and predominantly uh, male dominated um, spaces like academia and like then like on other bases and definitely my mom shout out mom um, um, I think yeah I think my mom again has been like a really pioneering person that has yeah taught me again to kind of like not fit into like this mold of as I said like this one like one-sided or like fixated side of like um, an African woman so I think like just using my voice and being like continuing doing like my education like a kind of that um, emphasis on like education being um, important and as I say just really standing true and like advocating for myself so I think like those two women like would be like the most like really like influential people that I can think of that. I think trying to find a work-life balance as a PhD student has been uh, challenging. With the PhD there's just a lot of guilt when you're not doing the PhD and when you're away from the PhD you're always thinking about the PhD so it's kind of becomes a very like conscious effort to prioritize your mental health and to listen to your body when there is um, burnout and to learn how to say no. I think as a young researcher you want to build your CV and you want to um, again like seem very grateful for every opportunity that you're doing but I realized that at some point I was just taking on too much. Weirdly I found like by saying no like people have actually respected me more because now they really like value my time. Another element of self-care is uh, sorry going to the gym so I think like even that being able to take an hour out of my day when I'm doing the PhD and just going to the gym has like uh, really helped because weirdly like when I'm running that's when my best ideas come in so I'm that crazy person with the voice note sending a voice note to myself when I'm on the treadmill because again like I'm not um, fixated on a specific like theory or anything like that so I have found like balancing um, the two is kind of easing the pressure of the editing posters at the moment. I think the most important one is um, really believing in yourself. I think the best example I can give of that is how I founded uh, my magazine Unapologetic while doing the PhD. It's an idea I've always had. If I'm a black Irish student, I have nothing here that within the curriculum that I can relate to. And I think with that, I'd always had that idea throughout my whole undergrad. But then I was like, okay, someone else would, surely someone else would come up with an idea of doing a publication or a journal to advocate and champion um, people who look like me and people who have stories like me to tell and I think it was one of those things where I had to bet on myself and be like okay I'm going to create the magazine and I want to see if it's going to be something that um, people will respond to and they did. So I, had a, a unique perspective where no one else would have been able to do it the way that I have and now that I've established an apologetic I can see it like within different uh, migrant communities where I'm like oh but you have this that sticks out to you yeah I think the main important thing is like really betting on myself and betting on my ideas no matter like how crazy or out there I really I think of them I like thinking outside of the box I don't really like um, following the rules with like within the convention of I don't know any way of like um, representing um, different discourses or anything like that but I would love to get an opportunity to do a postdoc um, hopefully like in America or Canada or just anywhere that I can find an opportunity um, I really would love the um, idea of turning my PhD into a book I think that's like one of my top goals uh, for the next five years like I think environmental humanities is just something that's really like expanding and it's um, bringing in different discourses it's very overwhelming bringing in all these different and um, disciplines and different languages and but then also black studies I think um, within the black studies like there isn't um, there's room for black Irish scholars we have like such a different um, perspective where like a lot of the times if you talk about race and racism is from a very like Americanized or 
from a very like British Afro-European perspective but we don't really have that like language in Ireland so really just again advocating kind of for the yeah for the need to like reimagine and like really rewrite like African histories and like black people's stories like from like um, nuanced perspective that isn't very like homogenous and just the sense of like powerless and agentless like I think if I'm if I manage to do that then I'd be really happy with my career. think like once you kind of have a belief in yourself and understand that again like your perspective is something that is needed I think like you have more power to kind of like accomplish more than you would ever think of it's genuinely like being your own high person and like not doubting yourself because you'll spend so much time not thinking that you're good at something like while like other people like really um, admire the work um, that you do and, like bet on yourself and do it like the worst that people can say is no but like you'd be so surprised with how like open society is for like your perspective like um, with the magazine like I think the whole idea of it was everyone's like we were waiting for something like this so I think like it'll just be that like really betting on yourself and like um, believing that again like what yeah, what you have like is unique in that regard.